Hey everybody, we're back. Um, thank you for joining uh, Henry, Annette, and 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 me for uh, this. Uh, I don't know what we're going to be calling these uh, these little episodes, uh, but we have a, a big COVID and senior citizen health crisis going on, and um, there's something interesting going on in New York. Uh, so, uh, Henry, I know uh, it looks like you're in San Francisco, but but you are, uh, are in New York. Yeah, uh, it is. It's, <laughs> I'm in New York. Yes. Yeah. So what's going on with New well, York? Thank you, Edwin. And thank you, Dr. Ned. It's always an honor to be with you. Yeah. What's going on in New York uh, as it relates to uh, seniors and uh, and the mayor and uh, and Bloomberg? Or Bloomberg? Yes. No, so no, thank you uh, again. So it's an honor yeah. being with you guys. Uh, de Blasio, de Blasio. De Blasio, de Blasio. Um, so I wanted to let everybody know, yeah. We thank everyone. I mean, I'm part of a group called Voices for Seniors. Uh, my grandmother is a survivor of coronavirus. She's 98 years old. I joined this group and I've been advocating. We had a, an event this past Saturday. We had a lot of politicians involved and they're getting involved. What's happening is, is that New York is uh, and four other states are facing a crisis where uh, the Department of Justice has launched an investigation of a possible uh, civil rights violation on the deaths in New York is up to 6,600, but they figure that there's a database that they use showing that a number of uh, senior citizens that actually died in the nursing homes and were actually transferred to regular hospitals, uh, the governor of New York State, Governor Cuomo, has not released that information. And also they have new guidelines right now that they uh, put in place that is making it very difficult for families to visit and the isolation is really, really causing a lot of senior citizens to fall into depression with their demented state. So we are in a crisis right now. And, you know, it's, it's hurting all of us here, especially me with my grandmother, who is 98 again and in the nursing home. And we can't hardly see her step to a glass window. Yeah. So, Annette, well, what, what do you know about the uh, senior citizen health crisis uh, as it relates to COVID in New York, as well as nationwide? Well, it is obvious with this virus that people who have comorbidities and age are at higher risk for the virus. However, for our seniors, especially the ones in assisted living, you have to understand that a lot of these people perhaps live, orient themselves, uh, keep themselves mentally uh, healthy by the interaction that they have with their most dear loved ones. You know, it's taken them years to get to a point where they may not recognize things short term. So when we isolate them and we allow strangers only to take care of them and to care of them, it's like putting somebody in solitary confinement. We as human social beings cannot tolerate solitary confinement. We do this to torture people, to make people comply. But in our elderly, what we're really doing is we're advancing their death cycle. Uh, so what 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 uh, is going on in uh, in New York, and how what kind of impact will that have um, with the, with the nation? <laughs> Henry. I'm sorry, say, repeat the question. I'm having a lot of communication. Okay, yeah. I can't, in, uh, you have to repeat the question. I'm sorry, I'm getting. Yeah, well, in, in, in New York, what's going on in New York and how is that going to impact uh, the nation? And what, what can we do about well, it? Well, um, right now, not just New York, those, yeah, those other states, we're looking, New York right now is uh, the state said, they're looking into uh, pushing a bill. There's a couple of uh, assemblymen and women and state senators are looking to push a bill that would, would create an independent investigation into the deaths and also the guidelines that they're putting in place now. Unfortunately, the person that's putting up this bill is a, is a Republican. We are uh, Democrat uh, uh, dominant right now. So the Democrats have control of both the assembly and the Senate. They're not allowing it to go forward. But mm -hmm. because of this uh, DOJ investigation, uh, they're looking, they're looking into the case. They already sent letters to, to Governor Cuomo if this was to be an open case and as a civil rights violation, it's gonna be a domino effect to the other states and any other state that's facing the same situation. So we're hoping 
that either the DOJ or they are able to pass this bill that shows an independent investigation on the deaths that uh, occurred. Now we still think it's more than the 6,600 here in New York State. We think it's as much as 11 to 12,000 based on the number of deaths of senior citizens that died in the hospital during the pandemic. Wow, wow. Uh, so is, is uh, Bill Barr, uh, AG Barr gonna get involved uh, in this uh, or is it just gonna be the DOJ? Oh, well, it's the DOJ, of course, A.J. Barr is, is the, yeah. the head, but the DOJ Civil Rights Division has looked into it, and they say there's a possibility that they may, they're just looking into as an inquiry. If they open up the case officially, I'll let you know, but this is going to be an impact. We're waiting right now for them to do that. And also, I wanted to add, in Massachusetts about a week ago, their own attorney general from the state have indicted two leaders or uh, CEOs from nursing homes for not handling the pandemic and the number of deaths there. Their number of deaths is high too. Also, I wanted to add Pennsylvania, also six agencies, federal agencies, have also have taken control of two homes and they're looking into irregularities there too. So we're looking at number of states that local and the federal government is looking into uh, what happened in this pandemic. And uh, Dr. Nett, I don't know the, um... Uh, the assisted living industry very well, but they are regulated uh, by the state agencies, not right, and not not by the federal. Usually, the yeah, the states have the more guidelines. Um, the federal government doesn't micromanage uh, long-term care facilities because they're local entities. So obviously, the municipality, the local city and county, and state agencies come in and regulate. We have to remember though that these are homes. They are not things like hospitals and acute care facilities, but yet they are places that we have found uh, as far as being able to protect our citizens. And now without having the advocacy of family present during these times, there may be abuses going on. Um, there may be other things that are being done to our elderly that are creating more of a situation to put them at risk, uh, stress factors. So what we're looking at is, are the things that things like Governor Como has done, which is basically make it almost impossible for family members to be there for their loved ones, are those things contributing to collateral death, uh, collateral uh, problems in health? Because when these individuals end up having heart attacks or strokes, et cetera, and end up getting moved to hospitals, of course, they're going to be infected patients at some point at risk of cross-contamination. So we're creating a lose-lose situation for our elderly. Right, and I, I'm sorry, Henry, I've had to put you on uh, mute. So uh, when you wanna chime in, uh, please un unmute yourself. Uh, and so Annette, uh, you know, given the fact that uh, the um, assisted living industry is predominantly uh, regulated on a state and local level. Uh, why do you think um, the, 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 on the federal side, um, people are blaming President Trump for, uh, for these wrongful deaths in, uh, in facilities that are primarily regulated by state and local agencies? Because people love to blame Trump for everything. <laughs> I mean, somebody can sneeze down the road and it would be Trump's fault. It's almost ludicrous, and 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 I entertain um, the idea that at some point our bias media is going to have a backlash, which is what I think is starting to awaken now, because they're so far out there in blaming um, the president for everything that they look ridiculous, and it makes it look very very suspicious that they are covering up for somebody. In Como's case, obviously, it were the mandates from the governor's office that he signed off on that made it so that people who had been infected with COVID came back into the facility as residents. Um, perhaps some of the staff was not practicing the best um, infection control mechanisms, and therefore, he made it very dangerous for people to live in extended care facilities and assisted living facilities. And it was all covered up. 
Right. It was all covered up because they basically hid behind the governor's mandate. Right. And uh, Henry, you're, you have boots on the ground. You, uh, you know, talk to uh, uh, patients, uh, family members, and uh, what do you think? Are you seeing the general uh, public uh, really understanding that this is a state and local uh, agency responsibility? And are they starting to uh, get the blame from, uh, from Trump to Cuomo and de Blasio? and so, so forth. It's a mix because with the organization that I'm a part of is uh, what you see here. Most of the folks that we have there have lost a loved one during this pandemic. There's another portion, you know, I would say 5%, 10% of the group like myself who have a loved one that's living in the facilities and they're isolated. Uh, most of the public itself outside of us, uh, they're mixed the group. If they are against Trump, they're gonna be blaming Trump anyway. If they are Republicans and conservatives, they're going to be against Cuomo. But it's just obvious because everything that's happened up to now, we were able to prove it. We post, we post videos of people that are isolated. But I got to tell you, man, if I can add something, I actually, in me, a few of us, we go after the local politicians. And this is my message to, again, to the local politicians. They know who they are. They're staying quiet. This is not uh, a partisan issue. This is something that's a crisis. All we are asking that you join us, and they're not doing that. And by being quiet, that tells me that you're you're not even for us. And the ones that are helping us, we have a few politicians. We thank them because they are trying to push legislation, and the media too. We have the mainstream media who's not being too friendly, but at the same time they are. I have few that come out and they do cover. So we're kind of thankful for that. So it's a mixed feeling of how the groups are looking. It depends what what issue they go by. If they're conservative, if they're liberal, it all depends on that. Uh, and and on, on a local level, you know, we, we should, uh, you know, appreciate the uh, local and state um, uh, elected officials. So who are, who are the state, local and, and state officials that we should appreciate? Uh, can you give them a shout out? Yes, I can give a shout out to uh, Congresswoman Stefanik. She's been one that she's a rising star in the Republican Party. She's taking front row with us. Um, others would be another one. His name is Assemblyman Kevin Burns. He is a Republican. He's a ranking member, I think, for the Health Committee for the Assembly. He is also pushing the issue hard. There's another one called, his name is Senator Tedisco. He actually is together with another Assemblyman. His name is Ron Kim, who's a Democrat. They both have a bipartisan bill, which is to get an investigating committee to look into it and subpoena powers. Listen to this one. If they were able to pass this bill, that's what happened here in New York. They had two committee meetings in which it was supposed to be a huge thing, but they did not use their subpoena powers for Governor Cuomo's, uh, uh, his name is Dr. Zucker. He is the commissioner for the Department of Health. They did not use subpoena powers to try to get the numbers that we're looking for and the guidelines. So it's a little bit of a battle. And um, on the federal level, we have Congressman Scalise. He is part of the COVID-19 response committee. He's a ranking member and he's also trying to push the issue. And off the top of my head, uh, anybody else, but we, we really want the president, if he can really see that we know that he has a soft spot when it comes to people in need, uh, the elderly from New York. So we really want to get that message. We're hoping the president can really come in and he's trying his best because I think he gave, he signed an executive order the other day, about a month ago, he put in $5 billion towards the nursing homes. We're worried that this money is gonna be allocated to these nursing homes, but are they gonna be used appropriately? Great, great. And I'm gonna give uh, Dr. Annette uh, the final word. Do you think uh, what's going on locally and on the state level in New York, uh, do you think the uh, federal, uh, federal powers that, that be uh, will pick up on this and uh, uh, develop positive uh, legislation to help the seniors? I certainly hope so. There's also evidence that on an executive level, the president has prompted CMS or pressured CMS into investigating facilities. I think I shared that with Henry. There have been multiple fines uh, given to uh, extended healthcare facilities and to assisted living type facilities where they have been fined for perhaps not providing the best care or falling be, uh, underneath the national or federal guidelines. So I think our president is working on some of these things. 
uh, along with all the other things that he's not being given credit for in trying to help us with COVID and reestablishing our business communities and helping us get back to normal. So there, there are things on the horizon. I do not believe that our news media is actually covering a lot of these things, which is very, very unfortunate because people feel left out and they feel like we're not making any progress. And I think that's being done on purpose because it's just before an election and they wouldn't wanna give credit to this administration or to individuals that actually are trying to protect seniors because you know that Republicans don't care about anybody, right? So that's the attitude. And I think that's horrible because healthcare, our loved ones, our families, these are not political issues. These are American issues. And to make them disappear and not have any, see the, any light of day is completely horrifying. Right, 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 right. And that is uh, the last word on that. Uh, stay tuned for our next episode and our next topic. Uh, we will talk to you guys soon. Thanks for joining us.